Rest by Hill Adamson The crow is a creature of many mysteries. For instance, he has two hearts, one inert inside the other. He brings darkness with him, sure, but also glittering things. In the sun, he looks like a crumb from the deepest cave. And if the clouds sink low, his shiny black head is a star, brighter and brighter. Sleep never comes to this creature. He closes his disc eyes and yearns for rest. Seasons spin in their sockets. Winter falls off its shelf with a whoop. The mouse of the field goes home, and yet, all down the road, dutiful fence posts yawn a little, strangely restless in their shallow beds. The crow has a bad reputation in the eyes of the society. We often watch it on horror movies, as a scavenger or even as a messenger of death. It is almost present in Halloween dark sceneries, such as graveyards and haunted houses. It symbolizes omen, either a good or as mentioned mostly, bad ones. In the poem rest by Hill Adamson, the crow was described as a good one. At first, the poem illustrated the crow as a creature of darkness and full of mysteries. Despite its negative criticism, the author was able to convince its readers that the crow has a better description, from being a mysterious to majestic creature. It described it as hard-working and with glittering color of its feathers. This is why I chose to pick this poem for my oral presentation. I found it interesting and uncommon that an author was able to write a good description of the crow. In reading aloud this poem, it is important to have different varieties of voice, such as tone, pitch, volume, rate, and correct pause. This is helpful to avoid your listeners of getting bored and to understand the content of the poem. In other words, as a reader, it helps to properly convey the message to the listeners with the correct use of varieties of voice. In my case, while I was reading the poem aloud, I was being judged by my wife. She often commented that my initial attempt of reading the poem aloud doesn't make sense. According to her, I was reading it too fast. Some improper pronunciations of certain words were noted, and the posing of certain phrases was crucial in delivering the poem. It is indeed that practice is needed to exercise the control of the mouth as well as the tongue.